Hello to all you neurohackers out there. Welcome to Tech vs. Psych, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm your medical doctor confident, Dr. Cody Rawl. Today, we're going to dive into a product review of the Muse 2, the beautiful Muse 2 that came out here this fall 2018. Um, I've wanted to do this review for months. I've really been holding off on it because um, now it's spring 2019 and I still haven't done like the official Muse 2 review yet. But it's because I didn't feel like I had enough information first to actually make the uh, best review video possible for Muse 2 right now on YouTube. Um, Part of that was interviewing Dr. Graham Moffitt, who is the chief researcher at Interaxon, and asking him all kinds of different questions about what they did to actually improve from the Muse 1 to the Muse 2. And for those of you who haven't watched a lot of my videos before, uh, I've been doing review videos on the Muse device from Interaxon for years now and have made a ton of videos on it. Uh, Interaxon is the company that makes the Muse, they're based in Toronto, Canada and uh, they originally came out with the original Muse 2014. There was a bit of an update in 2016, but largely kind of the same device, but this is the first time that they really didn't overhaul uh, enough to the point where they say, this is Muse number two. And they're working on the other products like the Smith Lowdown Focus Glasses, the Muse Soft Band that you could wear during sleep and during exercise. But again, this is the first time they really like reshaped the whole uh, flagship product. And of course, the Muse headband is a mobile electroencephalography device, or EEG. It's got sensors on the forehead, sensors that go behind the ear that detect the minute electrical changes that come with different modes of attention and awareness, whether you're uh, focusing intently on a given task, or if you're meditating, that's gonna change your brainwave frequencies, and that gets um, detected by the headband, it sends the information via wireless Bluetooth to your smartphone. The Interaxon slash Muse app uh, detects those brainwave frequencies, analyzes them, and then gives you audio feedback to determine whether or not you are entering a meditative state or not, and guides you through a meditative session using audio feedback, which is a process called neurofeedback, to enhance your meditative experience. And so going from Muse 1 to Muse 2, um, they're, they're really trying to enhance how that process works and that's what this device is mainly for. The other nuances to this hardware is you can actually record raw EEG brain waves with programs like Muse Direct or Muse Monitor and upload those brainwave frequencies and share them with your friends in places like uh, the Facebook community, the Muse Facebook community. There's a lot of different nuances to discuss here and I'm gonna put in clips of uh, Graham talking about these different concepts just to uh, you know, make the video a little bit more rich, but we're gonna get into the good, the bad, the ugly of the Muse 2. Overall, it's a great product, but there are some nuances to understand here and understand the difference between Muse 1 and Muse 2 so that can influence your purchasing practices. So let's dive into it here. So like I said before, Interaxon has released and is working on some other products to include Smith Lowdown Focus Glasses, the Muse Soft Band for sleeping and other active exercises. But the Muse 2 was the first time that they really did a redesign of the Muse headband, their flagship product. Uh, it was released in November 2018. The first thing that you'll notice is the nice packaging the product comes in. They really played up the sense of community that's formed around this product with all these different and diverse people on the headband box. It definitely alludes to the groups that have formed online and are sharing information about the neuroscience through this product like the Muse community on Facebook. Some things that you'll notice first off, the Muse 2 is smaller and lighter than the Muse 1. They largely kept the same quote unquote form factor. As the head of research, Graham Moffat said. In, um, yeah, in, in most cases we stuck with what worked. Mm -hmm. um, sure. You know, but we, we, we've learned a little bit about material science in the last um, four or five years. Uh, you know, we tried, uh, we tried some slightly different materials in the, um, the Smith, uh, uh, Smith EEG glasses and we learned a little bit from that and then so this is just sort of a next iteration. Um, one of the things we did was we changed the electrode material on the um, uh, frontal electrodes from silver to gold. Mm -hmm. um, it has it has some some basic characteristics and properties that give gold a little bit of an advantage in terms of uh, durability and biosignal uh, bioimpedance. So it's not a big not a big change. It's not a not a material change in terms of um, what Muse is made of. Um, it's a, it's definitely a lot lighter. You know, it's sort of you can carry it around. Uh, it's a lot less bulky than the um, than the 2016 Muse and the 2014 Muse, but 
um, still very much the same form factor because it works. Uh, and, you know, people have gotten used to it now and it's easy to put on. And uh, because it works, uh, you know, we're not going to break um, the thing that works. Um, so, yeah, we're still we're still working on some of the firmware updates that we'll want to enable researchers to do the sort of full gamut of all of the, the work that they want to do with Muse 2. Um, but uh, we're, it's, it's been very well received and we're encouraged by um, how people have uh, how people have used it. I can see why they didn't want to change the whole product design. You know, you got something that works, you want to replicate it, just make that better. And that's awesome. I'm glad that they did that. Uh, the first Muse was so successful that radically changing its shape or how it would fit on your head would likely have been a big mistake in my opinion. So my hat's off to Interaxon for going forward with that uh, direction. The most noticeable addition is this red light right here, which is actually a PPG that detects pulse sensations from your forehead temporal artery to track heart rate. And that leads us to the improvements in the basic software. So Muse2 has traditional EEG neural feedback option that we have grown to know and love, but there are actually additional sensors that include heart rate and breath. And as Graham explained in our interview, there's much more um, that meditation is about than just monitoring your own thoughts and focus. Um, so one of the things that's been most popular has been the heart biofeedback. So we created this really neat auditory environment uh, where we actually uh, went out and recorded some drummers, um, a variety of different types of drums, like frame drums, Native American frame drums, and, and some other things. And uh, we play people's heartbeats back to them uh, as a drum beat. And that's sort of in an auditory environment, uh, much like the Muse auditory environment. So it's, uh, it's a really nice soundscape. Uh, and you can actually hear, when you play somebody, it's actually surprising. It was even surprising to me the extent to which just respiration accelerates and decelerates the heartbeat when you play it back to yourself. Um, you know, you can really feel when when your when your auditory system is trained is listening to it as opposed to sort of sensing it. Uh, you can really feel and hear the acceleration and just as you inhale and then the deceleration as you exhale and the sinus arrhythmia. And that um, people not only like that, but that's a really good way to teach deep breathing and to sort of introduce people to breathing exercises. So. The whole framework we built out with Muse 2 was we decided, okay, we've learned a lot about how people use the Muse technology uh, when they're learning to meditate and trying to focus. And uh, we realized that like, along the way, we had to actually put in a, a pretty strong pedagogical framework around that to, to teach meditation and to give people insight into meditation alongside the, the feedback. Um, and what we've done now is with Muse 2, uh, we have a movement-based biofeedback, so we want to teach people how to sit relatively still. That's, uh, you know, sort of an initial step to how do I sit? And, you know, is my posture right? Am I swaying too much? Am I swaying too little? Am I fidgeting? Um, then we teach people how to breathe with the breathing biofeedback, which is based both on, on movement and on um, cardiac um, sinus arrhythmia. And then we teach people how to listen to their heartbeats, which is um, a pretty powerful way to um, teach them interoception, so how to feel their bodies and how to be in their bodies. Um, and interoception is, um, if you can believe it, is actually a pretty strong correlate of um, some characteristics, some personality characteristics like emotionality and emotion regulation. Um, there are all kinds of correlates. If you look at the literature on um, uh, interoception, so how do we, you know, how do we sense our own bodies? Um, <clears throat> what you see is that the the, the classic task for this is. Well, the classic psychometric task, experimental task, is count your heartbeats for like 30 seconds or a minute. Um, and so you, you go and count your heartbeats, and then if you're accurate to within two heartbeats, you're considered accurate, and if you're not, you're considered, this is just sort of a, you know, a dichotomy for statistical purposes. But it turns out that the better you are at that, um, the better you are in, in many respects at self-regulation. So as Graham explained in our interview, there's a lot more to meditation than just monitoring your own thoughts and focus. So awareness of your posture, of your breath, and other bodily sensations are very important to building the mindfulness component of meditation. So this all teaches interoception, which helps with um, regulating emotions. You get uh, better emotional regulation. Uh, studies have shown when you're more aware of your bodily sensations, like your breath, especially if you get really anxious or irritable, you know, your breath is going to speed up and get more shallow and learning how to sort of slow that process down and deep, deep, take deeper breaths actually helps people have better emotional control. So these additional features coupled with the really cool looking and comfortable device are definitely the pros of the Muse too. 
Okay, so now for the cons. So to be completely honest, when I first got my Muse 2 headband, my new one, around uh, November 2018, it was a huge bummer because it worked the first couple of sessions, but then after that, it started uh, dropping the signal. So I would put on the headband and it wouldn't be getting um, the bioimpedance, it wouldn't have a good connection to my scalp. And I was like, you know, putting water on there and trying to figure out why it wasn't picking up my brainwave signals. Um, because you know, when you get that graph and it fills up those colors, that actually tells you that it's detected um, a good connection between the device and your scalp and can actually read your brain waves. And so I started doing a little digging online and what I figured out is that other people were having this problem too and it was actually the Bluetooth signal that was dropping. Um, you know, Muse, um, this is the way these companies work, right? They design the uh, overall product, but they need uh, pieces from other companies to actually create the overall experience. And what had happened is that the Bluetooth chip that they were using was malfunctioning in a lot of units. So I was actually worried about the company just because you know I, I love so much what they've been doing over the years and all the respect that they've uh, gained with their clientele. That would be such a bummer if a third party Bluetooth app uh, sorry, uh, third-party Bluetooth chip in the device actually caused them to gain a bad reputation. But I was thoroughly impressed when I emailed the company and said, hey, I have a malfunctioning headband, and they quickly replaced it with one that actually worked. And I did see that a lot of other people had that experience too. It wasn't like I was just getting special treatment because I make these videos. So I thought that was a testament to uh, the dedication this company actually has to their, uh, their customers and their clientele. And uh, the Muse headband, the Muse 2 headband that I received after the uh, one that was malfunctioning has been working flawlessly for months now. So I've been really happy with it. Uh, regardless, I think there have been some casualties here, unfortunately. Uh, the company did make public statements on their website about pulling back from efforts to embolden their software development kit and research platforms um, because I think that they really needed to refocus on uh, customer care and make sure that they didn't have another hiccup like that because things like that can totally ruin a company. Um, Muse Direct appears to still be it available, um, but it seems to affect other companies trying to gain direct access to the Muse 2 software. Um, the prime example is MindLift. Um, I use the MindLift system a lot with my clients using the Muse 1 headband. And for those of you who don't know, MindLift is a traditional neurofeedback system that you can use with clients to improve things like focus and reduce anxiety. But the neurofeedback system to this day of July 2019 still does not work with Muse 2 at the time of this video posting. So I've spoke to the, C the MindLift CEO and I know that there's ongoing discussions on how to get this up and running, but for now, the Muse 2 actually does not work with MindLift, only the Muse 1. But remember, MindLift is not a uh, core feature of the Muse experience. You can totally very much enjoy what Muse is doing without MindLift. MindLift is more of a clinical tool that's used by clinical physicians using neurofeedback for uh, treatment and performance enhancement. I think that they've really or reoriented there to make sure that they didn't have another big mishap like the malfunctioning Bluetooth uh, connection and I know they brought on world-class experts on to uh, consult about improving that connection problem and improving the overall uh, customer experience right out of the box. So um, I, 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 my hat's off to them for uh, you know reorienting their resources just to make sure that their flagship product was the best experience possible so that they can have a healthy business there and get on with all the even more interesting stuff, which is the scientific research and outreach into um, communities like the mental health community that would really benefit from meditative practice. So that being said, here are my conclusions. Number one, if you're using the Muse device for yourself and it's purely for meditation practice and don't mind spending an extra $50, totally go for the Muse 2. It's sleek, it's very comfortable, it's lightweight, looks awesome, and the extra features are very fun to play around with. Number two, if you're on a tight budget and you just want the primary features of the Muse headband, the EEG uh, neurofeedback, 
Go with the Muse One headband if you feel like the $50 is not worth the extra features. Um, it still has the main feature of the EEG guided meditation and uses the same app with all the latest software updates in the EEG portion of the app. Um, you just won't have the heart rate and breath options in the software or hardware that the Muse 2 does. Uh, number three, if you're a uh, healthcare practitioner looking to use Muse for neurofeedback training with your clients through MindLift, be forewarned that the Muse 2 currently does not work with MindLift. So keep that in mind if you want to do traditional neurofeedback training. So hopefully it will be with the, in the future, but my latest information is that it is not yet compatible with that software. Number four, overall I would say if you're buying in bulk for a neurofeedback practice the economic route now would be by uh, mass bulk for muse one for neurofeedback training that will definitely get your uh, practice off the ground and underway and you can use mindlift if you want to uh, if you don't want to use mindlift and you really like the muse two you can buy uh, bulk muse two as well but for now i think that people that are trying to get a practice started the muse one is more than enough to get that up and running for you and your clients all right, all you neurohackers, I hope you enjoyed that review of the Muse 2 headband. I'll have more videos coming out soon that takes a deeper look at the software, the software updates between both the Muse 1 and the Muse 2 headbands. I know Anoraxan has been doing a lot of work there, so I want to cover those developments as well. There's a lot of guided tutorials for meditation that they're putting out, and that should be really fun to take a look at. Uh, for now, what I want you to do is actually take a look at this video, my interview with Dr. Graham Moffat, head of research at Anoraxan. On. He really goes through the whole process. We discuss this idea of coming out with the Muse 2 and what materials that they uh, use and other future endeavors for Interaxon. So check out that video right now with Dr. Graham Moffat.